Hello, in this video we're going to look at solving a problem using something called differentials. It's related to the idea of linear approximation, which is a way to estimate the value of a function with a linear tangent line. It's closely related but a little bit different. So the problem we're going to work with is the sides of a cube are found to be 6 feet in length with a possible error of no more than 1.5 inches. What is the maximum possible error in the surface area of the cube if we use this value of the length of the side to compute the surface area? Well, the first thing, let's just get this out of the way. We should have the same unit. So instead of 6 feet, where you want to say 72 inches. So the surface area of a cube is surface equals 6 times s squared because the area of each face is s squared and you have six faces or sides to a cube. So six s squared. So this is saying if I have an ideal side length of 72 for my square, I would have six times 72 squared, which gives me a surface area of 31,104 inches squared. So that's the ideal surface area. But it says the sides can vary by 1.5 inches. So they can be as big as 73.5 or as small as 70.5. And what is the maximum possible error? What's the biggest the surface area can be within that range for the side length? Well, the biggest would be if I go to 73.5 squared and have that be my surface area. So I have 73.5 squared, and that gives me 32,413.5 five inches squared. So the maximum error in the volume is then I subtract those two to get 1,309.5 inches squared. All right, so that's the way to think through it non-calculously. You take the ideal surface area um, and then you find the maximum possible surface area given that the sides can be within 1.5 inches of 72. But let's think about calculus in this way. So let's take a side trip over here. Differentials. Now there is a nifty thing we can do with our derivative notation. dy dx we all know is, means a derivative. But it also equals f prime of x. Okay, derivative equals derivative. It's just using two different notations. But it helps us for a certain purpose here. Because when I say dy, what am I meaning? Well, it's a small change in y. It's how much y changes. And what about dx? Well, that's a change in x. Okay, the dy dx is just shorthand for a change in y over a change in x. That makes sense because we know that a derivative tells us the slope of a function. And then what I can do with this notation is I can multiply by dx. So even though this is not technically a fraction, uh, we can actually work with it in this sense and multiply the denominator over. So I have dy equals f prime of x times dx. So what that's saying is if I have some function here um, and I'm at some x value and from there I create a tangent line. Now the slope of that tangent line is f prime of x. Okay, that would be the slope of it. So if I'm running along my tangent line if I go over a certain distance, which that would be the change in x, I would also have to go up a certain distance, which would be, which would be the change in y. And that would get me back on my tangent line right there. Now to find what that dy is, well that is just taking whatever my slope is and multiplying by dx. Okay, example. What if my slope is 3? So that's saying for every step I go on x, I go up 3. So if I move over just one step, it's going to be 3 times 1 equals 3. But what if I go over 1, 2 steps? So I go 1, 2, so I move over a change in x of 2. Well, that means I must apply the slope twice. So I go 3 times 2 equals 6. So now I'm going up 6, and that's my change in y. And that's kind of what this equation right here is saying. To find my change in y, or how the value of the function, how the output of the function changes, 
I use f prime of x times dx, the slope times the change in x. Now what's important to recognize is when I'm doing all this, this is an estimate, okay? Because I'm using, I'm using the derivative at this point. That's an exact value. But as soon as I move off and move up, I'm staying on the tangent line with that movement. And you can see with my picture how this right here, that's different from the actual. This on the curve is the actual y value, but this up here is what I'm finding with my dy. So to make this a little more clear, I can say that dy is this value right here. dy is that light blue. Okay, so that's the difference from where I started on the y to the new point on the tangent line. But if I want to know the actual difference between the actual value and the new value on the function, well, that's the change in y right there, and that's different. I can see it's a little bit less than the dy. So I'm just pointing this out to say that differentials are an approximation of how much the y value changes in a function because you're running along the tangent line instead of along the curve. Okay, and one last thing. When I say this, this is a change, a dy in the output of a function, and I can figure that out by taking the slope times the change in input. And that all brings us back to our equation here, our original problem. So I have s equals 6s squared, and I'm wanting to know as little s, and let me change that to x right now. As x changes, how does the surface area change? So I'm going to take the derivative of this equation with respect to s. That gives me ds dx equals 12 times x. So that's the slope. But then I'm going to create a differential by saying ds equals 12x dx, just like that. So now I can see the change in surface area is equal to 12 times my x times my side value times the change in x. So I can plug in my numbers to figure out what is that biggest possible change in x. So I go 12 times the ideal side length, so like where I'm starting at, times how much can x change? How much can it vary? It can vary by 1.5. So I multiply those, 12 times 72 times 1.5, and I get 1,296 inches squared because we're dealing with surface area. Um, and so here you can see the difference between these two. On the first one, what I did in blue, I could call this the change in y, and a lot of books use that notation. That is the actual, the very specific difference in possible error of the surface area. Well, when I did this blue, this is the dy, so approximately what it is. And you can see how they're close, and there's an error there. Uh, but they are close in value, but this is how I use differentials to estimate that difference. So now I want to slide over to another problem, and we'll try it again, and we'll go kind of quick with the second one. All right, the radius of a sphere is found to be half a foot in length with a possible error of no more than 0 0.03 inches. What is the maximum possible error in the surface area of the sphere if we use the value of the radius to compute it? So again, a half foot, well, that's six inches. We want to keep our dimensions the same. So surface area of a sphere is 4 pi r squared. 4 pi r squared, r squared because you're dealing with surface area. That can help you remember area as a two-dimensional thing, so r squared. So using differentials, I will take the derivative with respect to r. So I get 8 pi r multiplied by dr, the change in r, and I get 8 pi r times dr. So what is this possible change in surface area? Well, let's plug in 8 pi. The radius should be 6 inches, but it can vary by as much as 0 0.03. The change in r, the change in radius, can be as much as 0 0.03. So then I'm given that, and I go 8 times 6 times 0 0.03, and then times pi, and I get the value of 4.524 if I round to that. 
um, and we are dealing with a change in surface area, so inches squared. So using differentials, we can approximate the maximum possible error is 4.524 inches squared. Just understand this idea of differentials. It comes from the fact that f prime of x equals dy dx, which when I multiply by dy d, when I multiply by dx, I get this little guy right here, and this is called a differential. So the differential of a function is dy equals the derivative times dx.